Wisconsin falls in West Lafayette, 78-70 to the Boilermakers. Most of the time, my official stance is the refs aren't worth talking about. I don't think it affected the outcome of the game, but they're worth talking about in this one. Disgusting. A disgusting ref show in West Lafayette as the Badgers drop their final Big Ten game of the regular season and fall out of the top four seed contention and a double buy for the Big Ten. So I'm going to break it all down here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a Six Pack. The Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. I don't like to talk refs. And some of the conversation going on on the website formerly known as Twitter right now is, oh, of course, Big Ten refs. This always happens with Big Ten refs. Big Ten refs are terrible. Watch any other league. Watch comments from fans of any other league. Those fans will tell you they're fans of the Big 12, they're fans of the Pac-12. They, they will tell you their refs are terrible. There is something that I go to as my personal philosophy again and again, which is that everybody's always going to complain about the refs because regardless of which team you are cheering for on the court, the easiest team to cheer against is the officials. That brings everybody together. And there are more eyeballs on the refs now than there ever have been. There are more camera angles than there ever have been. That being said, the game has to be officiated evenly. It was gross. This was gross. And there is lots of Zach Eady conversation around it. As Zach Eady has long been dubbed the most difficult player in college basketball to officiate. And there's some truth to that. But you simply cannot let a player just mug folks down low, cannot let a player run through guys in order to get an advantage on the offensive end of the floor. Simply being bigger does not give you more leeway in having foul calls made. I do think in the beginning of Zach Eady's career, he was perhaps more of a victim of officials not knowing how to officiate him than he necessarily needed to be. I think the pendulum may have swung a little bit too far, but again, I don't think that's necessarily the difference in this game here is Zach Eady hanging out down low and, and kind of what his advantage there is whether that be from officials or from his play, because largely I, I think it is from his play. Where I have some issues with the officials in this one, thinking at the very end of the game, the very end of the game is the biggest talking point here because Chucky Hepburn finds himself on the floor after getting smacked in the face, smacked in the face, poked in the eye. His, he is bleeding from his forehead. And I don't want to be hyperbolic. I don't know exactly how bad the bleeding was, but he's down on the floor grabbing his head for a very long time. Meanwhile, Purdue is running down the other end of the court with five on four advantage and buries the three to effectively put the game away. The game was really already out of reach, but th this, this really did seal the deal. Meanwhile, Greg Gard is screaming at the officials that his player is down with an apparent head injury, something we as fans are told the NCAA, the Big Ten, the powers that, that be take seriously. That's what we're told. Did not appear to be the case in this one, and it was particularly egregious given that Braden Smith 
had fallen to the floor in the first half with an apparent ankle injury. Wisconsin is running down the court to the other end, and the official stop play. But Wisconsin cannot get the same resulting call with its starting point guard down on the floor. Same, same position. Same position. Starting point guard, starting point guard. Same thing. With Wisconsin starting point guard down on the floor with an apparent head injury, nothing. Nothing. Head, head it down to the other end. It was awful. Awful, awful, awful to watch. And Greg Gard, rightfully so, was giving it to, to the officials. And I don't know if he gave it to the official through, through the entire media timeout, but when they came out of the media timeout, he was giving it to the official. I don't know if it carried over for, for the entire for the entire time. But last thing you saw when, when the broadcast went to commercial was, was Greg Gard in the official's ear. First thing you saw when they came back from commercial was Greg Gard giving it in the official's ear. I do not know if the officials gave Greg Gard a little bit of a pass here and didn't end up teeing him up and ejecting him because they knew they, they got it wrong. I don't know what Greg Gard said. I would love for somebody in the, in the post game to ask. Um, of course, you know, media only gets so many questions with, with Coach Gard. Uh, so I, I don't know because there's, there's a lot of questions going on in this game that I think are worthy of asking. So if nobody asks, I, I think I'm fine with that. But that, that was bad. There's also some other times where the officials in this game just swallowed the whistle for, for Purdue in ways I thought were borderline offensive, frankly. You can look and find on the website formerly known as Twitter several clips of Zach Eady in particular, which is why I started the conversation that way. But other Purdue players on offense just running over Wisconsin Badgers players while Wisconsin is on defense. It is. Look, I know that the officials have largely taken the charge call out of the game. But some of these were awful. Tyler Wall got ran over multiple times. Chucky Hepburn got ran over multiple times. There was a sequence in which John Blackwell got ran over, knocked down, dragged to the floor. No call. Turned around, went to the other side of the floor, got called for an offensive foul that was way softer than what went on at the other end of the floor 15 seconds prior. It was gross. It was awful. And yeah, Wisconsin was in foul trouble for most of this game. Both teams, and it's not that there was a, an absurd foul disparity, right? Wisconsin called for 19 personals. Purdue called for 17 personals. Purdue shot 21 free throws to Wisconsin's 14. Whatever. It was just a, a gross officiating performance. One that I didn't like. There's also other times where there's calls that went, like, maybe not Purdue's way necessarily. There, there was a bucket on a putback for Zach Eady that Wisconsin wanted reviewed for um, an offensive basket interference called. They called it a good basket on the floor, but then did not call it a good basket on the floor so that they could go back and review it. Just weird, weird, weird ref stuff that I think Wisconsin fans have a right to be ticked off about, I don't think should take away from this game and say that one was stolen. But I am going to be fascinated as someone who has been a Purdue defender, I think most of this season, someone who I believe on this show have said multiple times, hey, this is not the Purdue team that lost to Fairleigh Dickinson last year. Brayden Smith is a lot better. Fletcher Lawyer is a lot better. The, the ad of Lance Jones is a boon to this team. 
This this Purdue team is not the one that lost to Fairleigh Dickinson last year or the one that lost to St. Peter's the year prior. That's what I that I have said. That's what I did say in the past, in recent weeks, in recent days. I am going to be looking forward to watching and observing how Purdue is officiated the rest of the way. On a neutral floor where crowd influence does not come into play, and that is a real thing in college basketball. So in the Big Ten tournament, we'll see. There's still Big Ten officials who have seen Zach Eady over and over again and seem to have some kind of agreement between the, the officiating crews for how he is going to be officiated. When they get to the NCAA tournament, it, it could be an absolute wild card that might decide Purdue's fate. I, I think Purdue is really, 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 really good. I, I have said on this show, I have said in articles on Badger Notes, you can find my latest bracketology projection for, for Wisconsin uh, in the link to the podcast description published on Badger Notes. I've said several times, look, I think Purdue is clearly one of the best three teams in the country, arguably the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Boy, if I don't feel a certain type of way after watching this game. Boy, if I do not feel a certain type of way after watching this game and not anything close to what I felt after the first game in Madison. I was totally fine walking away with that one. With the loss for Wisconsin, I thought Wisconsin played well. And frankly, thought Wisconsin played pretty well in this one, too. But just didn't have any ill will toward anything after the game in Madison. I'm kind of ticked off a- after watching this game. Not, not fun. Um, ultimately, I think about a four-minute stretch decided this one uh, for, for Wisconsin. And Wisconsin did not play well. In the first half, uh, at least the first half of the first half, I guess, the first quarter of this game. And a lot of that was due to foul trouble that Wisconsin found itself in very early. Max Klesnick picked up two early fouls. Uh, Stephen Crowell picked up his second foul with 10.28 remaining in the first half. Just 16 seconds later, Wisconsin's backup center, Nolan Winter, picked up his second foul. Wisconsin was forced to put Chris Hodges on the floor in the first half for some minutes. Something that, uh, let let me see here. Um, Yeah, when you look for Chris Hodges on Wisconsin's Ken Palm page, you can't find him. He doesn't play. It it was was rough. And, And frankly, I think Wisconsin deserves a heck of a lot of credit for staying in this game despite the foul trouble. Wisconsin played not very good in, in the first half. Some things went against them and only came out of the first half down 11 and ended up losing this game by eight. So fine in the second half, came up plus three in, in the second half. Ultimately, Wisconsin had a chance to, to come back in this game and win. Trying to decide if I should go to a break. Um, yeah, let's, uh, trying to. Wisconsin had a chance to come back in this game and win, but about a four-minute stretch doing the Badgers. We're gonna talk about that four-minute stretch here after we talk to you about our friends over at TickPick. Perhaps you got to go to this, this game in West Lafayette uh, and, and get your tickets over on TickPick, but maybe you're thinking about making making a trip over to the Big Ten tournament. The Big Ten tournament, not all the way out on the East Coast like it sometimes is. Not even so so far as Indianapolis. You just gotta get just gotta get up to Minneapolis. Get up to Minneapolis. If you live in Milwaukee, that's a short flight away. Madison, that's a short flight as well. Re- relatively ch- cheaper from Milwaukee, but heck, make the drive. That, that's not a bad drive from almost anywhere in Wisconsin. I, I make that drive several times and I live in Milwaukee. Um if you're gonna go to the Big Ten tournament, which Wisconsin is gonna be playing in, in the next couple of days here, uh, I would buy my tickets on TikTok because TikTok always gives me the best deal on tickets no matter what what event i'm going to sporting events concerts comedy shows um ticketing gives me the best deal and if i find the same tickets on another ticketing site at better price ticketing can actually refund me 110 percent of the difference in credit and 
TickPick has no fee tickets. No fee tickets. You're going to pay zero dollars in fees on tickets every time you buy on TickPick. Pay zero dollars in service fees, delivery fees. When you use my link in the podcast description, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order as well. How about that one? Uh, save 10 bucks on your first order on TickPick. Download the TickPick app. That's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Use my link in the podcast description. The link that's on your screen now. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order on TickPick and use it to get no fee tickets to anything you might be wanting to go to very, very, very soon. Um, MVPs and NI... No, let, let's do the four-minute stretch here. I'm all over the place, folks. All over the place. It's a crazy Sunday. It's, it's March Madness. Madness. Wisconsin women's hockey bracket is out for the, for the NCAA tournament. We broke that down in the show just prior to this one here, uh, Selection Sunday for the NCAA tournament for women's hockey. Wisconsin's bracket fate revealed. You can listen to my little recap of that in the last episode here in your feed. Also got some pieces up on Badger Notes, of course, uh, about that one. You can find those links in the podcast description, and we'll, we'll be talking all things NCAA tournament this upcoming week with, uh, with Noah. But a four-minute stretch doomed Wisconsin in, in this game against Purdue. When Wisconsin got the lead to four, there was a real chance Wisconsin may have pulled off what looked like an improbable comeback about 20 minutes of game time prior. Wisconsin looked bad really early. A.J. Storr took a bad early shot. I think settled in fine otherwise, offensively at least. Tyler Wall, I thought, played very well, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more on the, on the tail end of the show here. But th there is some four minutes that Wisconsin really ended up throwing this one away. And part of that, I, I think, is something that I have, I have harped on over the last couple of weeks here, and something, admittedly, I was wrong about from the jump. I thought seeing the uptick in Mark Silver minutes was, was going to be good, and it just hasn't been. It, it just hasn't been what we as fans would hope it to be. Mark Silver played 10 minutes in this game. I guess played fine. Uh, five points, three of those coming in absolute garbage time. Finally hitting a three. Uh <laughs> to get the backdoor cover if you're a person who cares about those kind of things. Um, but at the after the under 12, Wisconsin came out and had the lead down to four with Purdue getting the ball after the timeout. Marcus Silver made a great play and actually forced a turnover, which jumped, jumped out of ball. But then on the ensuing possession, as the shot clock was winding down, and I get that, but he had an open look, a pretty dang wide open look. Mar Marcus Silver airballs a three. Rough. Purdue goes down to the other end and, and gets the lead up to seven once again. Then on the other end, Tyler Wall attempts a three. And yes, Purdue is playing excellent defense on, 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 in, in this stretch, not allowing any penetration whatsoever. But Tyler Wall taking a three is almost never a good result of, of an offensive set. Then you get some real shenanigans going on just a couple of possessions later. And who is it? Cam Heidi? No, 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 no. Who is it? Um, Caleb first hits a three. kidding me you're kidding me Caleb first is a three it's not a shooter that keeps the lead at seven the other end Wisconsin goes back to the defensive end of the floor there's a loose ball and Stephen Crowell just jumps on top of Fletcher Lawyer like onto the back of Fletcher Lawyer in a move that doesn't make any sense I understand scrapping for, for the loose ball but the ball was loose and Stephen Crowell just jumped on the back of Fletcher Lawyer, effectively tackled him. 
in a move that made absolutely no sense. Stephen Carl was not going to be able to get the ball out of there. And that resulted in Stephen Carl's fourth foul. Immediately after that, Nolan Winter picks up his fourth foul. And then both centers for Wisconsin are in deep, deep, deep foul trouble. Headed into the under eight. Now, this was another situation where I thought the officiating was question was quite wash questionable. No, can't talk. Uh, was questionable though, because this foul call against Nolan Winter was phantom BS. There's an offensive rebound opportunity for Purdue. Zach Eady almost grabs it, but Nolan Winter is tied up with Zach Eady for the ball. That should have been a jump ball call, and they said as much on the broadcast. It looked like a jump ball in real time. Both players had hands on the ball. Nolan Winter, I think, had two hands on the ball. And it was still called a foul on Nolan Winter. At that point, you, you got to tip your cap to Purdue and say, fine, this one's you know all but over. Uh, every time Wisconsin got a chance to come back in this one, they, they just put it away just at enough. Wisconsin didn't get it within one possession in the second half. That, that was ultimately it. You can say getting it down to four is technically one possession <laughs> with, with a made three-pointer and a four-point play uh, off a foul, but didn't get any closer than four. Every time Wisconsin made a push, Pur Purdue responded, and that was that's what it was. Uh, it, it was. It was incredibly close to a blowout in the first half. And so for Wisconsin to respond the way that it did, I thought was admirable. You, you never feel great walking away from a loss, but it's an eight-point loss in a game that you trailed by 11 at the half. Purdue is beating teams in the Big Ten coming into this one by 13.4 points at home. Tip your cap. Say it's fine, I guess, enough. Um because I thought there were some Badger players that played pretty well in this game. And look, one of those, it's got to be Tyler Wall. Tyler Wall, your last regular season game as a Badger. Yes, he had a couple of boneheaded plays. One, I didn't like the, I didn't like the three. Didn't like the three. He also had two turnovers, both of them in the first half. Both of them pretty bad after Zach Eady went to the bench with two fouls. One of them was the last Wisconsin offensive possession of the first half where he just had a like lazy soft pass that went directly to a Purdue defender. It didn't make any sense. I couldn't tell if he was trying to make a skip pass or what, but the ball just didn't go anywhere except directly into the Purdue defense. And that, that was too bad because I think those couple of lapses really like put a damper on what was ultimately a really, really, really good game for Tyler Wall. 17 points on seven of 10 shooting. He got to the line a couple of times. I thought he really went at Zach Eady, forced Zach Eady to, to picking up a couple of fouls too. Tyler Wall had four offensive rebounds, 17 points, 10 boards, five assists. Have a day, Tyler Wall. I think you're the MVP coming, coming out of this one. Uh, if it's not you, I guess you could say AJ Store. He had three steals, one turnover. That's great. 17 points of his own on 615 shooting. Some real high volume stuff, but it's what Wisconsin kind of needed. Those latter two points were, were dunk at the very end. <laughs> Didn't make the Purdue crowd very happy with it, that one. But I'm fine with that. Um, if it's not, Tyler Wall, though, and I don't think it's John Blackwell. Dude. Or sorry, I don't think it's H's store. Dude, John Blackwell. John Blackwell. Showed up. Showed up and showed out. He had 18 points, led Wisconsin in scoring on 7 of 10, shooting from the field. 2 of 3 from 3. 2 of 4. Free throws. That a day. He, he just doesn't take a bad shot. He doesn't take a bad shot. You feel great every time John Blackwell gets the ball. Uh, after the under eight timeout, where Wisconsin came out down nine, Blackwell made a great baseline cut. Um, 
ended up cutting the lead back down to five again. Like, like I said, I thought that stretch after the under 12 tied out in the second half kind of killed Wisconsin because it was it was the chance they had when, when the lead was closest. But Blackwell gave them a chance and put it down to five again. Um, a, a great baseline cut and a, and a feed from Tyler Wall, one of his five assists on the day. Tyler Wall to John Blackwell connection was cooking at a couple of times uh, in this game. I thought it was very impressive. John Blackwell just doesn't doesn't take a bad shot. He doesn't take a bad shot. And that's, I, I think, the one of the best things I can say about him. Because, look, AJ Storch takes some bad shots. Chucky Hepburn takes some bad shots. He, he settled down largely. John Blackwell never takes a bad shot. He plays really hard on defense. Wow. John, John Blackwell, he, he's just... Greg Gard has said it since, what, December? He is playing beyond his years, a, a true freshman and someone who is going to be a, a key piece to this team next year. And I think has a real case to be Wisconsin's leading scorer next season. It's going to be phenomenal to watch. Uh, the NIP of this game, the needs improvement player for, for Wisconsin. I think I want to go with Chucky Hepburn, he did not have a good offensive game and is still struggling more on the defensive end of the floor than I would like him to. He came out of this one two points on one of seven shooting, 0 of four from three. I didn't love any of his three-point attempts, quite frankly. And now some of this is that Wisconsin, part of the reason Wisconsin lost this game, right? Lose by eight, shooting five of 24 from three compared to Purdue's 9 of 18 from 3. Wisconsin stayed in this one despite really kind of getting cooked in, in the first half in the, in the offensive metrics. Wisconsin was only down 11 at the half, despite shooting 12 of 33 from the floor, that's 36.4%, and 2 of 13 from 3, that's 15.4. At the half, Purdue had been shooting over 53% from the field. Purdue on the day made 50%. He made nine of 18 three-point attempts. Scott did shot six more threes and made three fewer than, than Purdue did. Look, Chucky Hepburn, if you're going to chuck up four threes, got to make at least one of them, right? Uh, I, I, thought, I thought that was tough to watch. They're... There needs to be more offensively from Chucky Hepburn, particularly in a game where you're not getting a ton from Stephen Crowell. Now, I said Stephen Chucky Hepburn was the NIP of this one. Because I need to give something else to Stephen Crowell because that performance from him was abysmally bad. He did not take a shot from the field in the first half. Because he got in foul trouble so early, he only played nine first half minutes. He picked up his second foul at 10.28 to go in the first half. And checked in later in the first half because Wisconsin didn't really have much much going for it at center because Chris Hodges wasn't giving you anything. <laughs> Nolan Winter got his second foul 16 seconds after Stephen Crowell did. And then later on, around the six six and a half minute mark, Crowell appears to pick up a third first half foul. Fortunately, the call was changed to, to go against Tyler Wall. But that could have been really, really, really bad for, for, for Wisconsin. He ends up fouling out in this one overall, only 0 of 2 shooting from the field. One of those is a three-pointer. So only took one, two, two rebounds and an assist, two turnovers. Stephen Crowell in foul trouble, as we have chronicled on this show, has been a problem. As we talked about in the, in the preview leading up to this game. Stephen Crowell could not get into foul trouble if Wisconsin was going to win this one. He got into foul trouble and got into foul trouble early. Early, 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 early. It was not good from Stephen Crowell. This team just is not going to be able to do as much. The, the gap between he and Nolan Winter offensively, I think, is shrinking incredibly rapidly. Defensively. I don't think Nolan Winter has it yet. He he did not look like he was having a good time against Zach Eady down low today. I, I figured he, he was going to struggle. Said, said as much in the preview episode of, of this game. 
but a year in the weight room, that, the playing time, it, between, and I've had conversations with other people about this, playing time between Stephen Crowell and Nolan Winter might be close to 50-50 next year. And I know that's kind of against Greg Gard's MO. Um, and maybe Wisconsin needs some, something else in the front court in more of a big bang and down low five than it, than it currently has. And you make Nolan Winter more of a more of a four, more of a power forward to, to fill that gap that's going to be there from Tyler Wall. Wisconsin's got some real front court problems. The backcourt looks good. Maybe there's there's some folks that leave and, and make us think backcourt's not that great. It's free agency in college basketball, but Steve McGrath did not do a lot to inspire confidence. If if Wisconsin is going to to play well in the Big Ten tournament and, and in March Madness, win, win some games. They're going to need more from him. But overall, I thought they got enough to, to make me confident that, that Wisconsin can be successful in the Big Ten tournament. Look, in the second half, Wisconsin shot 51.7% from the field, held pretty to 44% shooting from the field. But Purdue shot nearly 55% on threes. It's six of 11 threes in, in the second half compared to Wisconsin's three of 11 on threes in the second half. It's just the way it goes, I guess. Shots weren't falling. You had some trouble with the referees. <laughs> mm. I think it's a tough game to lose because Wisconsin fans can walk away feeling like they could have stolen one. Had a real chance to do it. Had a chance coming down the stretch, but just fell behind too early to give themselves much of a real shot. But held Purdue to 34 points in the second half. I think that's admirable, particularly given how well they shot the ball from three. On on the game, you, you held Zach Eady to... 25 points, 14 rebounds, held him too, I guess. But nobody else on Purdue really got off on you. Fletcher Lawyer did. Fletcher Lawyer had a game, 15 points on 5 of 5 shooting. Braden Smith, 10 points, 10 assists. Purdue's bench didn't really give him that much. I think you walk away feeling okay with the effort. And that's how I, how I felt after the game in Madison too. Just just stings that for how, how good this regular season started for Wisconsin. It, it's not going to end double by in, in the Big Ten tournament. But we'll break that down a little bit more this upcoming week uh, on the show. So, so stay tuned to the feed. I, I want to dig back into my predictions from this Wisconsin basketball regular season as I had chronicled them on Badger Notes in November leading up to the season opener. I want to talk about some of these predictions because – some of them we can start talking about now. Some of them we're going to have to talk about later. And, and maybe we'll, we'll take a look at what, what some of those are going to be. But if you jumble up the order of some of these wins and losses, I think this Wisconsin basketball season feels quite a bit better than, than it does right now. And who knows? Maybe, maybe they do some stuff in the next couple of weeks and we feel a lot better than we do right now about this Wisconsin basketball season. It's March. It's madness. Right now, it's sadness, but it's not over yet. Uh, thank you for listening to the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. I've been your host, Kendrick Snumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kendrick Snumbers, or follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Until we talk to you again tomorrow. See you soon.